Morning angry fans. Not going to work today. Off to London. <clears throat> Another appointment to see the surgeon. Oh, just for a chat. So not a very long video today. Well, it might be, I don't know. This bit won't be very long because I'm only driving to the station and it only takes me a minute, well, a few. I um, turned the telly on this morning and I just could not believe what I was watching. I could not believe it. I mean, you know, and speaking as someone who was a dental student in London, lived in London from 76 to 81, uh, you know, when the IRA were blowing everything up, uh, and was in London on the day that the the, uh, B the BMA bomb went out off, you know, in the West End, the bus bomb, and on a day when they stopped all traffic and made the situation three thousand times worse by by literally halting all underground services and all bus services so that nobody could get home because everybody was at work, uh, and when Oxford Street was so quiet. You know, it, w it was a unique opportunity to lie down in the middle of Oxford Street because there were no, there was no at that time. There was only uh, buses, taxis, and uh, uh, well, mainly buses were allowed up Oxford Street, and uh, there were no buses, so there was no traffic in Oxford Street. So you could literally, if you wanted to, you could have lied down and had a nap in the middle of Oxford Street in the road. And uh, believe me, I was sorely tempted to, because you know you have to caveat mTOR and all that, carpe diem. <coughs> And I'm, I'm watching on ITV, the news channel for the, for the discerning <laughs> fascist, calls for, you know, someone, someone who's lost his wife. And I've often said that, and, it's, and it sounds harsh again, but I've often said that the people who uh, are, are called upon to make suggestions and come up with ideas and give and vent, vent their, for the most part, limited intellectual capacity by virtue of the fact that they are intimately involved with something like a death or, you know, some relative of theirs has been killed. They're always said, oh, what, what's the, you know, they're given airtime to say what they think the solution is as if being, you know, having someone close to you killed makes you like a guru. I mean, obviously it gives you an ex experience that most of us don't get, have or want. Um, but it doesn't mean that intellectually, it doesn't intellectually validate your pre-existing prejudices. That it just tends, they just tend to get aired. And so what's happened is this poor guy has you know came on and said basically something must be done you know this cannot continue something must be done he's sort of venting his frustration which you can understand obviously he's frustrated and uh, but then you know this begs the question what what are you suggesting should be done and they don't ask that question and they can't ask that question. They're afraid to ask that question because they don't know what he's going to say. You know, he could, he's, he's likely to come back with anything, anything from uh, we should uh, sever our ties with the Americans. We should, uh, we should uh, pull our troops back from overseas. We should uh, expel everybody with a non-UK passport. He could come up with any of those things and they dare, dare ask him what they think he thinks should be done. So this poor bloke is on TV saying, I think something should be done. And there's a vacuum, you know, because they don't know what to, they can't interrupt him because uh, politeness dictates that, you know, you have a bereaved party who's good enough to appear on national television live to, to share his pain and his loss, which is what they thrive on, the, the emotional, you know, the, the, the emotion, they, they feed off the emotion of the participants and the, the more emotion the participants bring, the better it is for them and for their ratings and the emotional temperature of the audience goes up. Um, and uh, 
you know, and uh, he he resorted, I think, because he felt under pressure, under some pressure, after having repeated about ten times that something should be done with the capital S. Um, he then said that uh, he felt it was the fault of the police and that the police weren't robust enough and that the police couldn't punch their way out of a paper bag and the police couldn't arm wrestle his 14 year old daughter you know and so so the police got it in the neck but well, you know that, and then that was followed up right as if that wasn't bad enough cringeworthy enough and embarrassing enough it's then followed up with a with a some colonel blimp from kent who's head of uh, cobra so which is i th which is a briefing room I don't know how he's head of it, but I presume it's another organisation that, you know, tries to <laughs> tries to get some sort of brand brand values from the striking snake. Uh, and uh, anyway, you know, and basically he said that um, everyone who's non-British um, should be expelled from the UK. So not you know, and so that they can't do do to us what they did to us in Manchester he actually said that and <clears throat> Kate Garraway uh, finally was forced to point out and uh, as they always are because in America they're like you know um, in America they they come on and they say well you know we should ban mainly it's to do with gun crimes in America isn't it they say oh, we should ban this we should ban that and then the interviewer immediately says well yeah but that actually wouldn't have prevented the disaster that we are talking about um, your and, and she was like forced to point out that this guy was was a British citizen. So in fact, uh, you know, he wouldn't. He, although he was on uh, MI6's radar, he wouldn't have been one of the people who was a non-UK citizen involved in terror who this bloke wanted to deport. Deport, by the way, you know, without going through the court process, just sling them out you know preferably from a helicopter into the North Sea and um, and his solution uh, for uh, when she pointed out finally that he, he was actually a UK citizen he then said that any uh, citizen um, who's a UK citizen who goes abroad and uh, is suspected by the security forces of going through some sort of terrorist training camp shouldn't be allowed back in the UK so again, you're thinking, well, that's eminently sort of, that's actually a bit sensible. You know, if you've got, <laughs> if you don't want to catch cancer, you don't let cancer cells in your body, do you? You know, that's the sort of thinking that you get on your typical IT, going through your typical ITV viewer's head. So, um, but, you know, he said that this bloke shouldn't have been, been let back in when he came back from Syria. To which Kate Garraway again had to point out that he'd not actually been to Syria. Where, where he'd been, it'd been Libya and that he's born to Libyan parents. So in fact, he'd just gone back to see his rallies. As far as the computers are concerned, you know, a visit to Libya, if, you're, if your grandparents are there and your parents were born there and all your aunts and uncles are there, presumably, it's not gonna raise any eyebrows, is it? So, you know, so, so I mean, I don't know where they get these people from. I don't know, all I can, the only thing I can think is that, um, you know, you have to ask what agenda he's serving, and his agenda really is serving the interests of people who want to perpetuate the, you know, who who stand, where, follow the money, where's the money in this? And the money is really in uh, paying large sums towards security firms, you know, both uh, military and uh, domestic, to, uh, to crack down on, uh, to hire security and security devices and CCTV manufacturers are going to do well out of this and the government will do well out of this I mean you know there's no denying that that if they can get through this ridiculous law to uh, ban end-to-end -end encryption ban ban all encryption in this country and force any you know any messaging firm to reveal anybody's messages at, at one day's notice then um, you know, which is impossible anyway. I mean, they they, they ignore. I mean, the, the government will do well because it will constitute mass surveillance. In effect, it, it'll mean it'll mean the introduction of mass surveillance, and the governments do well 
if they mass surveil the population because it gives them access to all sorts of information which helps them stay in power. They become entrenched, you know, they become established. So you don't really, your elections are not really elections because one side actually knows which way the population is going to vote and they position themselves in a way that ensures that they get re-elected. Uh, they, know, they know what's popular, so they make themselves popular. So, um, oh, that's a shame. It's badger in the road. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I mean, bearing in mind, I mean, that that <clears throat> this uh, WannaCry virus that's encrypted everybody's the National Health Service was has been introduced into computers because of a hack that was discovered or purchased by the American National Security Agency, which they sat on and didn't tell Microsoft that they had, that they could hack into Microsoft computers. And, you know, which is fair enough. You can say, oh, well, they're a spy agency. Of course, they're going to spy, aren't they? Of course, they're going to spy. Well, that is actually, I agree, that's fair enough. Don't tell Microsoft you can hack into any Microsoft computer. But the problem is, if you can do it, so can everybody else. You know, and there is a policy of what they call responsible disclosure, whereby if, if a white hat hacker finds a vulnerability, they're supposed to declare it so that it can be so, uh, uh, fixed, not just to stop them getting in, but to stop everyone, the North Koreans, the Chinese, the Russians, the Australians, for God's sake, getting in. But the big mistake they made was not, was not at that point, I don't think, in my estimation. It was that when, when these exploits were lost, which they were, they were literally hacked. And the NSA lost them. <laughs> and, and at that point, they didn't tell Microsoft. They sat on it, I think, for about nine months. And before they finally said to Microsoft, oh, well, by the way, just a couple of things. One is we have got a hack that allows us to hack into Microsoft computers. And the second thing is that um, we lost them all. <laughs> nine months ago <laughs> thought you might like to know and so that's so and you get one cry out of that so there's a lesson there isn't there that you know it, it, making these systems less secure doesn't doesn't help you know it's really is not going to solve anything the terrorists are still going to have encryption it's in the open it's open source now thanks to phil uh, what's his name and um, they'll carry on encrypting stuff um, and um, all, all that will happen is the, the population as a whole will just to be subject to mass surveillance. Anyway, not really a dental theme, but um, you know, important nevertheless. You know, I think from I was I was literally shocked at what I saw on the on the TV this morning. I just could not believe it. I couldn't. I, I'm thinking of all the steps towards a police state. I think today, Thursday, 25th of May, is 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 quite a significant one. Anyway. Um, I'll, um, I might talk to you a bit later then perhaps on the way home let you know how it all went alright bye